which group, which position group for the Oregon defense has the highest expectations. I started off last time, so I'll, I'll give you the floor here, Ryan, um, as we tackle this one. Uh, defensively, it's all about the linebackers to me. I think that Justin Flo is the the main guy defensively. I think the Sean Dollar is the main guy offensively that I'm thinking is going to be the breakout guy. You know, the linebacker core. I think it's going to be unreal. I think you know Flo. I call him the apex predator. The guy is just absolutely insane out on the field. Whether or not he can stay healthy is the real question. Um, but you know, I think you know what you have with Noah Sewell. I think you're going to be having some great expectations for Jeff Bossa. Uh, I talked with him at the basketball game was like, dude, you could be MVP next year. And he's like, you better believe it. <laughs> so he's got all the confidence in the world. Super athletic. Um, I love the move of Adrian Jackson to the middle. Um, I love Keith Brown, what he brought to the team last year. Absolute gamers, absolute stud. So I really like the linebacker core. Um, I think they're very versatile. I think there's guys in there with some speed. There's guys in there with some power. There's guys with both. Um, I think they're, the main thing is, is just them b- building a better scheme so they don't leave that middle so wide open. I felt like they were very much taken advantage of last year by the scheme. Other uh, other coaching staff just absolutely picked them apart. And it wasn't the, the, the linebacker's fault. They were doing what they were supposed to do. They were up in, on the line when they were passing over the top of them. Uh, or vice versa. So I would love to see the offensive uh, uh, teams that we face this year have some serious troubles against the middle instead of those automatic first downs when it was third and 15, you know? <laughs> yeah, I, I'm I'm going to be right there with you on the, the linebackers having the, the highest expectations just because they're so deep and you have so much returning experience and production at that spot with the linebackers. Uh, Drew Mathis is a guy that you lose as well as Nate Hukalani. But for the most part, you have a lot of the bulk of those guys back and, and a bunch of promising young talent. You know, mentioned Keith Brown, who, who kind of got thrown into the fire and, and uh, you know, did all right against Ohio State. You know, you can't – it's, you know, you, it's harder to draw – it's difficult to draw up a harder team to debut against than Alabama. You could pro- – or sorry, than Ohio State. Alabama would be another one of those. You could probably count on one hand – that it would be, you know, really tough to debut against. But Jackson LaDuke, another guy that got yeah. some uh, some time towards the end of last year after coming back from injury, thought it really speaks to, you know, his development and where he's at with his football IQ, that, that he was able to come in and get some really decent snaps. And I thought that the production was pretty solid as well there. But with, with Bossa, I think he has a tremendous amount of intrigue. Lanny was asked why he thought – Bossa had a better fit at linebacker and he said he he combines the the speed of a defensive back with the the physicality or the speed or athleticism of a defensive back with the physicality of a linebacker and in today's age of college football you got to have linebackers that can run that's just the uh, you know the, the simple fact of the matter so I think that Bossa is definitely going to help with the coverage you know you to your point about the middle of the field being wide open but another thing that I got to be expecting if, if I'm looking at this linebacker group Who's going to step up and help get some pressure on the quarterback? Because those are two the two areas that I feel like the defense really had to improve on from from last year. There was also some pretty soft, uh, you know, uh, I want to say I don't know if I say coverage, but I think a lot of people were saying multiple times last year how they noticed that defensive backs were, were giving those the receivers a ton of room just off the ball, which uh, I think can kind of put you at a disadvantage depending on the situation. But I think that yeah, the the Pass rush has to be something that this group helps generate. And I think that I'm expecting guys like Trevin Mai to, to take a step forward. And um, Noah Sewell obviously being the, the face of that group. And then with Harrison Taggart, how does he factor into all of this? Uh, there's just so much talent in that group that I think the bars is is uh, set really high. And then look for, for guys like Jake Long, a uh, new coach coming over from, from Alabama, and, and Tosh Lupoy to – to really help get that group to the next level. And then Dan Lanning as well. And I feel like that kind of just feeds into to reasons why the expectations are so high when, when you have guys that have worked with that position in the past and, and played at a really high level. I know that Tosh most recently worked with the defensive line, but um, you know, in addition to his assistant DC, uh, co-DC role, um, and with him and Pallage being co-DCs, he looks like he's going to be working with the linebackers. So plenty of reason for optimism with, with the backers, but also some some definite room for growth from a year ago. Oh, absolutely. And I think it's interesting how they listed uh, the players this year. Uh, they only listed two defensive ends. They listed Dorless and Brandon Swinson. 
Uh, and I think Braden Swins is going to have a hell of a year. I think I was very impressed with him last year, uh, but I was very impressed with Doralis as well. And uh, they, they're both listed as defensive ends right now, which I think is fantastic. Uh, the other guy, of course, I love, you know, is, is Mace, you know, Mace Funa coming off the edge, you know, a guy who plays at that same type of warrior mentality speed that Noah Sewell and Justin Flo, they play at, they're going to get hurt. They're going to go through it. And, and he's a guy who plays hurt. He's a guy who's had just a tremendous career so far. Uh, you know, absolutely a, a, a stud. I think the outside linebacker is one of those big question marks going into this year. What are they going to do with these guys? Because there's some real talent there. And moving Adrian Jackson in the middle gave me kind of more confidence about who they're dealing with there. Uh, whether it's guys, uh, you know, who, uh, you know, like uh, 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 Terrell Tillman or uh, Jabril Neal. Guys who maybe not have seen that much, but guys who maybe are just ready to go off because this defense, I think, is all about speed. So when I look at them, I'm like, who are the guys that are going to bring the most to the table with the speed? Might not be the same physicality that we saw in years past uh, with Cristobal. Might be more about speed, and there might be a lot more guys in the future that look more like Kayvon Thibodeau on this defense than in the past. There's Yeah, there's a lot of guys that we didn't really see too much of last year, but they are kind of those those tweeners a little bit, right? right. Uh, you mentioned Terrell Tillman uh, being a guy who kind of came in with with a lighter frame, and then uh, you know Josh here in the in the comments is asking, you know, what do we know about Buckner? He's a guy that I think is primed to take a, a big step as well. Mikey G talking about DJ Johnson as well. He's someone that we we cannot big forget time. about. He's big probably time. the guy on the front seven I'd say that I'm most excited about, yes. uh, just because it, it looks like he is primed to to serve solely in a defensive role. Uh, he's obviously shown that he can bounce back and forth between uh, defensive end and, and tight end. But I think that for this staff to really get the most out of him, it really serves him best and the team best. If, if that happens on, on uh, defense recently got engaged as well. Shout yep. out to DJ Johnson. Congratulations to him yep. on that. Um, and he, Mikey G saying here that he, that DJ Johnson doesn't get the attention that Tibbs got. Maybe he gets to the quarterback more. And I think that that'll really come with just having a more balanced defensive line is, you know, the, a lot of these opponents that the Ducks had last year were able to zero in on, on KT or, or Dorless. Right. But if that whole group takes a step forward, then it's going to become that much more difficult for the offensive lines and the, the offensive staffs of these opponents to, to zero in on somebody. Cause I think that as great as KT was, I didn't think he was as consistent as he probably wish he could have been last year. And that group as a whole, it just needs to, to elevate um, because then that then when you have that, you're getting more consistent pressure, which is going to be so crucial to, to forcing turnovers. But Buckner is a guy that that you definitely have to talk about when you're looking at the the front seven discussion and uh, someone who's you know in a good position to to take a step forward. And I think since he is a little undersized for a guy coming off the edge, um, you know I'm not using that to slight him because I think he's really someone who's used his his technique and his his experience training you know with, with his dad being an nfl coach um to his advantage and i think that that's something that maybe now he's better positioned to to use that to his advantage and, and take that stuff forward yeah I, I totally agree and 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 you know no slight to dj i i, I think he is going to be the man i think he has the ability every year he's been at oregon to be one of the better players on the team I mean, when he came over here wearing number seven, guy was an outside linebacker, great off the edge, held contained, did a great job coming from Miami, switched to the offensive side, and I thought he was the offensive MVP during the COVID year. I mean, oh, yeah, I think, I think 100%. I, I mean, he's just amazing. I mean, scoring touchdowns, first downs, he was an absolute sure-handed receiver, uh, and I thought he just was amazing. And then he went and played both ways. And in the last part of the Ohio State game, gets a quarterback sack or a quarterback rush, uh, 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 and then gets the first down. <laughs> in like the last two minutes, he has two huge plays on both sides of the ball. I mean, who's doing this in D1 football in 2022? And I think with him, just to focus on the defensive side, get his body right, get his mind right. Like you said, congratulations. I'm a big fan. of. I'm on team marriage. I'm, on, I'm, I'm, I'm there. You know, and it just there's something about it, you know, that you, you get everything put in order. You get this extra year. You have the ability to stay in school a little bit longer and get yourself put together. This could be a huge year for him. 
And I would expect him to be able to uh, make some noise into the NFL draft next year because he'll put up some numbers. I mean, he'll put up some numbers on the bench press, on the cone drill. He's a guy who could really surprise people. I, I want to say that he was one of these guys who had the most offers of almost anybody in the country as his senior year. I think he had over a hundred offers. Uh, he's a guy who's been the best player on his team for a long time. And I would love to see him go absolutely crazy this year and get maybe a couple, three sacks right out of the gate. First couple games to set the tone. All right. We, we said that for the defensive position group with the highest expectations, we, we kind of said backers, but you know, that kind of includes the edge. It depends if you guys want to talk to them about talk or view those guys, the edge defenders as defensive ends or, or uh, linebackers. But I think that a case could also kind of be made for the defensive line, just with the experience that they have there with Popo back, Taimani and, and Jordan Riley also coming in, but we're both pretty much in agreement on uh, the, the linebackers as the group that has the, you know, highest expectations right now for, for defense.